Morbid Angel's third album, Covenant, was a landmark release in death metal history. Being the first death metal release on a major record label, it represents the high watermark for death metal in popularity and commercial success. But, also for me, I think it is the peak of old school death metal. It is a white hot, blisteringly fast, blasphemous record, and today we take a deep dive into the first track on this album, Rapture. Rapture is old school death metal perfected. It is evil, fast, grimy, blasphemous, heavy, and intensely dark. The sound of summoning evil spirits from a grimoire. Lyrics sounding like an evil incantation, and guitar solos which sound like the screams of demons from hell. The song tells a story of a demonic invocation and possession. This is the deep dive on Morbid Angel's masterpiece, Rapture. This is the song we've been privileged enough to have on MTV's Headbangers Ball. This is the song called Rapture! The word rapture has two different definitions. The first and most commonly used is an expression of great interest or pleasure, or the way it is more commonly used, to be enraptured by something. The other definition is the Christian belief in the rapture, when a believer will be taken, i.e. raptured, to heaven at the second coming of Christ to be reborn under Christ's new kingdom. Both meanings are derived from the Latin word raptura, which means to seize which is also where the word raptor comes from, describing a family of birds which primarily use their talons to grasp and kill their prey. Thus, Rapture by Morbid Angel, I would say, carries both these meanings. The person in the song is being held in rapture by whatever spirit or entity they are summoning or invoking, but also by naming the song Rapture, it is also referencing the idea of the Christian rapture which is something that the song will turn on its head. Before we get into the track, let us take a look at the cover art for the album, as it is important to understand what exactly is going on here to understand the song better. Immediately you see what looks to be someone's desk with various objects piled on top of it. A candle, ink quill, and dagger are all placed upon various documents. The document on the left is a copy of the Pact of Urbain Grandier, and on the right shows a page from the Book of Ceremonial Magic by Arthur Edwards, which is a grimoire about other famous grimoires, and attempts to synthesize them all into one grand unified system of magic. While the subject of grimoires is beyond the scope of this video, essentially you can think of them as black spellbooks, if you will. If you'd like to know more, I suggest checking out this video from the excellent channel, Mr. Mythos. But in short, a grimoire is a book which contains knowledge on magic, Magic, or perhaps you could think of them as spell books. Often these books themselves are said to contain magical powers. They contain instructions on creating magical objects or invoking entities such as spirits, deities, and of course, demons. The other document on the cover is a pact said to have been written and signed by Urbain Grandier, who was a French Catholic priest in the early 17th century who was burned at the stake for witchcraft during the event known as the Loudon Possessions. The document, which is written backwards and in Latin, when translated to English says, We, the influential Lucifer, the young Satan, Leviathan, Elimi, and Astaroth, together with others, have today accepted the covenant pact of Urbain Grandier, who is ours. And him do we promise the love of women, the flower of virgins, the respect of monarchs, honors, lusts, and powers. He will go whoring three days long. The carousel will be dear to him. He offers us once in the year a seal of blood, under the feet he will trample the holy things of the church, and he will ask us many questions. With this pact he will live twenty years happy, on the earth of men, and will later join us to sin against God. Bound in hell, in the council of demons, Lucifer, Beelzebub, Satan, Astaroth, Leviathan, Elimi, these seals place the devil, the master, and the demons, princes of the Lord, Balbareth, writer. This document was then claimed to have been signed by Urbain himself and several demons. Now, the story behind him and this event is also beyond the scope of this video. I just want to establish the scene where the song takes place. Here, the character in question is alone at his desk. His intent is to invoke a demonic entity and achieve perfect possession of himself. Why would someone want to be possessed by a demon? For power, knowledge, envy. There are many reasons why someone would choose to willingly submit to a demon. Reading incantations, passages and spells from the grimoire, 
Lit by candlelight, he reads aloud the diabolical pact written by Urbane, and energy begins to fill the room. A sudden gush of energy, and wind blows out the candle. Perhaps a blood offering of his own is made. The invocation of the demon has begun, and the song starts. Essentially, to me, this song is the sound of invoking a demon or evil deity. The initial riser and sudden starting of the first riff takes place just after the initial invocation has begun. The chaotic first riff, which focuses heavily on the flattened fifth and flattened second intervals of the E minor scale, with the crazy intense and fast drums, sounds to me like evil energy and demonic spirits filling the room, surrounding the invoker with diabolical energy. Trey Azekthos, the riffs are absolutely evil and chaotic here. The next section here contains some truly unhinged drumming. Pete Sandoval's drumming here is like a whirlwind of energy, complete with blast beats that stop and begin at seemingly random intervals, crazy rolls and fills. It's just an absolute mess until you've listened to it a few times where it becomes crystal clear the intention of what everyone is trying to do in this riff. The second riff here is just truly madness. It's maniacal. It's crazy. The guitars and bass match this energy with maniacal riffage. We can imagine the invoker being now surrounded by whirling winds of energy and evil spirits, strange lights emitting from the sigils drawn on the document and papers flying around the room. This riff here is just death metal perfection to me. Evil, fast blast beats, tremolo-picked crazy riffs, just absolutely fantastic work here by the band. The band then switches to a third riff, which is classic death metal to a T. Chromatic tremolo picked riffage with blast beats. Honestly, great stuff. I love this type of camo shorts riffage. Here we get the first lyrics barked out by David Vincent and his bellowing deep death growls. Here we imagine the invoker, surrounded by the whirlwind energy, continuing to read out loud the spell. Confront me, unholy ones, bastard saints, scorn of the earth. I summon thee. Now poison me. Death under will burn in my soul. Here it is clear just by the first lines of the song that the invoker is attempting to summon some sort of entity, spirit, or demon in an attempt to have the unearthly spirit take over him to poison him. This is known as demonic possession. The song quickly goes back to the second riff briefly before returning to another set of lyrics. Exalt me, enemies of the Lamb. Intrude, we are of one. Under will, I walk the path of sin. With your spells, I die again. To exalt someone is to raise their status, rank, or power. So, in this verse, the Invoker is looking to receive some sort of supernatural power from this entity that he is summoning. To raise his rank amongst mortals. To die again is in reference to the concept of perfect possession, which is where one willingly submits to demonic spirit and they become as of one. The only way to undo this then is to have the ritual of exorcism performed upon the person. After an exorcism, which can be a multi-day or even week-long affair of constant prayer and ritual, when the demonic entity is fully exorcised from the person, the person will become overwhelmed with a massive amount of emotion, often relating it to being born once again. We know generally who this invoker is attempting to summon. Unholy ones, bastard saints, enemies of the Lamb. Clearly he is referencing to enemies of God, perhaps the seven princes of hell or God's first fallen angels. These being Lucifer, Leviathan, Satanus, Belphegor, Mammon, Beelzebub, and Asmodeus. These princes are also referenced in the Urbane Grandier document as well. See how it makes sense now that I mentioned it earlier? Although, these princes are called by slightly different names in the document. After this verse, we get the first guitar solo by Trey. The solo sounds almost like a rebuttal from the demons this invoker is summoning. It sounds like the demon has appeared and is asking the mortal why he was summoned. Underneath the guitar solo, we get in a right rhythm guitar track, a very pronounced and present flanger effect.
this effect in the guitar sound makes it sound like reality is warping, the sound of the guitar track swelling and contracting with the flanger. It is a really cool effect and it is used perfectly on the song. A very nice touch by Trey and I love when effects and extra production touches like that can be used in conjunction with the narrative that the song is trying to portray. The guitar solo ends and we get another verse. Raise me from mortal. My will be your will. My words speak your words. Your pains raise me to bliss. This verse is played with the flanger effect on the rhythm guitar still on. We can imagine the demon entity in front of the invoker, reality warping around them. He speaks this verse of the incantation out loud and perhaps completes some other ritual. It is often said to get a demonic entity to comply with your request, it must be bargained with or perhaps tortured. And tortured is usually with the use of a blasting wand. But to be honest, I have not the faintest clue of how one would torture a demon into compliance, nor do I really want to find out. Regardless, whatever the invoker is doing, the pain of the demon raises him to bliss. The song stops briefly, and the next section starts. Your pains raise me to bliss. After a brief pause, we get another guitar solo. This solo here is a genius one. One of my favorite of all time, even though it is so short, just for how it tells a story. This solo sounds like the cries of a demon in pain, and despite its brevity, contains all the information one would need for the story. The use of harmonics, whammy bar abuse, reverb, and delay give the solo an otherworldly quality, quite literally like a demon is crying out in pain. <laughs> Excellent stuff. The riff playing underneath is extremely diabolical sounding, making full use of the chromatic scale and tritone intervals. The next lyrics follow the short solo, while the guitar makes droning, gurgling noises underneath. What of this anger now? Received to lance your enemy. What of this anger now? Received to lance your enemy. I feel the energy. The poison moves in me. I spill blood. Here with Trey's guitar making maniacal noises underneath, David Vincent's vocals sound especially deranged. It seems to be that the possession is now complete, as it is hard to tell the demon and invoker apart now through the lyrics. The demon is now one with the invoker and is speaking through him, feeling the anger in the invoker, and he is ready to lance his enemies. The invoker himself though is still there, speaking of the demonic energy as poison flowing through him, and of the energy that he feels. The line, I spill blood, is said in a spoken voice. Perhaps the dagger we see on the cover now is used to complete and seal the deal, so to speak. Perhaps the invoker uses his own blood to draw the sigil the demon he summoned to complete the pact. We get two more solo sections here. The first one, which is played under a slow riff. This section, it almost sounds like something is crawling around, with cracks in reality emitting these screeching sounds. Excellent stuff here. We can almost picture the ritual happening here, the invoker's body contorting and twisting with the demonic energy flowing through him. Story-wise, the invoker is drawing the demon's sigil with his own blood, the cracks in reality becoming more and more, the power and energy of the diabolical spirit flowing through him. He completes the sigil. The ritual is now nearing its conclusion. As the invoker completes the ritual, the song again briefly stops. We get a bark from David Vincent, and we get back to the first riff of the song, which is played under the solo section. An incredibly wild and unhinged solo, it sounds like the screams of hell flying into our plane of existence through some tear in reality. Truly some excellent solo work here in the song. I really especially love when solos contribute to the narrative the song is attempting to portray, rather than just showing off the guitarist's technique. The solo fades as the next lyrics of the song are coming in. From the earth, I Scorn of the earth, I witness. In rapture, I'm reborn again. Scorn of the light, I bear scorn. In rapture, I'm reborn. The ritual almost complete. These lyrics relate to the title of the song, To Be Raptured, not by the second coming of Christ, but through the perfect possession of a diabolical demon. 
a new life as the scorn of the earth's power flows through him. Completing the ritual incantation, the first few verses are then combined into another. Confront me, unholy ones. Intrude, we are one. Under will, I walk the path of sin. With your spells, I die again. Occult rituals and incantations are often done repeating certain key phrases and lines. Here is no different. This last verse, all the lines about asking and summoning are omitted. This verse being more of a final confirmation. The last line in the ritual incantation, combined with the same wild tremolo picked riff from the first verse, it gives us a sense of completion, coming full circle, so to speak. The song ends with more flanger lace guitar riffs. The ritual complete, the final riffs are the ritual wrapping itself up. The demon now joined with the invoker are now ready to complete whatever nefarious acts the invoker summoned this demon to do. And that was Rapture. Morbid Angel as a band paint a very vivid picture with the music on this track, capturing the malevolent fury and intensity of a demonic invocation. The unhinged drumming and rhythm of the song gives us a sense of reality bending, warping and tearing, and the solo work of Trey is a textbook piece of storytelling through guitar solos. David Vincent's powerful deep growls give gravity to the lyrics, which tells the story of a ritual, demonic invocation, and possession. Combining this all with the cover art makes the song an absolute perfect opener and, in my opinion, one of the greatest old-school death metal tracks ever written. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. I feel like after writing this and speaking <laughs> the words out loud, I need to go see a priest. I have enough problems in the real world, I don't need any supernatural problems as well. This will probably be the last pure death metal deep dive track I do for a while, as I will be getting back to the sound of perseverance and rust in peace here now. But if you know or want to see any other old school death metal tracks done, leave your suggestion below. Uh, I'm always interested in what you guys want to hear. And yeah, what do you think of this song? Do you think my interpretation is correct? If you know any other information about some of the topics that the song is talking about, feel free to leave that down below as well. You know, I would I would maybe love to do some Cannibal Corpse or Obituary, but none of their songs seem to grip me as much as uh, Rapture by Morbid Angel does. Anyways, check out my other deep dives. I got one on The Sound of Perseverance, on The River Dragon That Comes, The Cretia, Lot on Death, and there'll be lots more coming, so make sure you hit that sub button. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers.